Amen, Brother Heron. And praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise God. Honored to be with you this morning before what the Lord's going to do today and tonight. And excited about what God is doing. Great things are in store. What a beautiful presence of the Lord is in this place today. You just feel the glory of God hovering above us. It's an honor to be here. I honor Pastor Olson, who is like a father to me. And Sister Olson, I hope you all love them with all your heart. I promise to serve them the best we can. We're excited about moving here and, and basing out of, out of Jacksonville. Probably won't see me very often because I'm pretty much in a different place every weekend. But uh, we are honored to be here with you. We love you dearly. Thank you for having us. God is doing great, great things. Amen. I feel something in my spirit right now. Genesis chapter 1, Ecclesiastes 3, Galatians 6. Genesis chapter 1, Ecclesiastes 3, Galatians 6. We're going to go Genesis 1 verse 14, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, Galatians 6 verse 9. Praise God. What a big, wonderful crowd we have today. Praise God. Amen. Church is growing. God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs, or in the Hebrew, signals, and for seasons. Someone say seasons. And for days and years. Ecclesiastes 3 verse number one says to everything there is a season someone say a season a time to every purpose under the heaven Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 9 says and let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not I want to talk to you this morning about signals of your upcoming season signals of your upcoming season thank you for your anointing thank you for the word of god thank you for the wonderful choir that just put us in the presence of the lord i worship you and i praise you for the atmosphere that i feel in here right now thank you for our pastor lord thank you for everybody that's in this building under the sound of my voice to hear the word of the lord release your word through me i pray today anoint my mind anoint my mouth anoint my tongue Loose the gift of faith. Blessed be thy matchless holy name. Would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? <laughs> Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you. Praise the Lord. It's funny how sometimes we can know the will of God and not know the time of God. With God, I'm learning everything is about timing. He can tell you something today and you can, and it's true, but it may not manifest for 12 years, 14 years, or 28 years. And sometimes when you know the will of God, but you don't know the timing of God, you get frustrated about things because you know he said this or he promised you that. And everything around you says something the exact opposite of what you saw or what you heard from God. It's not that God was lying. It's that God is a God of timing. Even though he dwells outside of time, you and I dwell inside of time. So therefore, he says things in the future as though they are in the present. In fact, he calls things that are not as though they were. So he, we don't even know what's going on. He says something, we feel it, and then it's for a set time. And there's something powerful about the timing of God in each and one of our lives. It's very beautiful what God can do in his timing and if we understood the timing of god we don't we have a lot less stress a lot less anxiety a lot less worry because timing with god is everything and part of timing with god are seasons that god set into motion with the lights in the heavens he set them for signals the bible said and for seasons for times for days for years seasons in the hebrew is moed which means the appointed place the appointed time the appointed meeting or the divine appointment 
to everything there is a season or to everything there is a divine appointment to everything there is an appointment with god if you serve god god has something planned for your life a destiny that only god can release to you if you hate god there is a set time in your life where the judgment of god will come to you if you reject his mercy time and time again but every single person in this building has a divine appointment with destiny they have a season where something is set forth in their life and the bible said that in due season you will reap if you faint not and the word do there in the heap in the greek is ideos which means personal or one's own in other words everyone has a personal season where the season is named after them just like there is spring and summer and fall and winter, there's a season with your name attached to it that when you step into that, everything connects, everything makes sense. The glory of God lands in your life because it's your season. And don't let the devil tell you that you do not have your season. Everyone in this room, if you've got the Holy Ghost, if you're living for God, there is a season with your name attached to it. There's a divine appointment where everything makes sense. Everything is connected. You haven't missed your moment. Your season is coming. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 through 3 said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which bringeth forth his fruit in not in fall, not in summer, not in spring, but in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I've come to tell you in the Holy Ghost that God has a season attached to your name, and you cannot quit, you cannot throw in the towel, you cannot backslide. Something is coming to you, and you've got to hang in there right now until your name is released into your... Someone just, just nudge your neighbor and tell them, my season is coming. My season is coming. If they didn't believe you, shove them and say, my, my season's coming. Someone didn't believe me behind me. The devil will try to tell you that you've missed your season. You've missed your moment. You're past your prime. You've gone too far. You've peaked in the spirit. And now everything is down. And I've come to tell you that's not true. What you thought was your season was just the signal of your season that is coming. Can I tell you something? Someone in here needs to understand that the blessings that God gave you yesterday were just a down payment of the destiny that's in front of you tomorrow. And everything that gets Shakalamahaya, everything that God God has got in store for you you can look back and say because he's been good he's going to be good because he took care of me yesterday he's going to provide tomorrow because he came through last year he's going to come through <laughs> hell tried to convince joseph he missed his season 13 years following as a slave you know his whole life finally he's in the dungeon the lowest place possible and two employees of the palace show up a butler and a baker and hell tries to tell joseph this is your season this is as high as you're gonna go you're gonna work with the employees of the palace but it wasn't his season it was a signal of where he was going Oh, I'm going to say it again. It wasn't his season. It was a sign of where his destiny was when that butler stepped in that prison cell that morning. That was a signal to Joseph of where Joseph was headed. And don't let hell tell you that because you're here and God called you there that you should be satisfied and settle at a lower dimension than what God told you your dream would manifest as becoming. You need to look the devil in the eye and say, I'm sorry. I'm thankful where I am now, but I'm headed somewhere in the spirit and I'm not there yet, but it's my season and I'm on my way. Oftentimes what we call victories or answers or breakthroughs or even miracles are 
signals of our upcoming season. David defeating Goliath wasn't a victory. It was a signal. He was going to be the king over all of Israel. It was a it was a signal that he was going somewhere beyond where he was. That's why you've got to be instant in season and out of season because your signal can come out of your season. And if you're carnal and don't want to connect and don't want to worship and don't want to have a prayer life and don't want to get a hold of God, when you're out of season and a signal shows up, you'll miss what God's trying to tell you. But if you are connected and you're reaching and you're trying and you're pursuing, you may not have any clue or any idea how God's going to do it. But a signal will let you know something is still out there for me because I can sense the Spirit of God drawing me beyond where I am. Shunammite woman had a prophet in her house all the time and he, she, couldn't get, she couldn't have a baby and, and he released a word to her and said about this season according to the time of life in other words a year from right now you're going to have a baby and that prophetic word wasn't that wasn't her season that was a signal of her season that was coming and we oftentimes misunderstand the two. Let me give you an example. When the shepherds had an angel in the sky, which by the way was pretty powerful, because the angel was backed up by the multitude of the heavenly host. Heavenly host is military. So it wasn't some fairy angels floating around with wings up in the sky saying, glory to God with an organ in the background. It was warring angels of fire. Read, read in, your, in your history, the sky lit up in, in the, Jew, the Jewish commentary, the sky lit up like fire. These warring angels were all over the sky in the background as this one angel stood up and said, You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. This shall be a sign unto you, he said. You shall find the, not your season. You would think that their season was meeting baby Jesus. I mean, it's a pretty big moment. But he said, it's not your season, it's your sign. Because when they met Jesus, then they went everywhere talking about it. And everyone wondered at the words of the shepherd. Ready? Meeting Jesus was their signal that God was about to give them a platform to release their voice about who he was. Can I tell you something right now? Your encounter is not your season. It's your signal of your season. We've got too many people that have platforms but never have an encounter. We've got way too many people that want to be on the stage, but have never been to the altar. Oh, it's quiet, but I'm going to dig it out. Way too many people wanting to be seen, wanting to be noticed, but do not have a walk with God privately or secretly. Then therefore, when they find their moment, their moment does not last. But when you get in the encounter, the encounter is a signal to you that a season of the favor of God is coming to you. In the in other words, when you get your breakthrough in the altar, you shouldn't get over it 30 seconds later. Your breakthrough is a signal from God. I'm about to do something in your life. I wouldn't have touched you if I didn't have to. But it's a signal. It's not my season. It's a signal of my season. Those ten plagues in Egypt were signals that they were about to leave. And every time the plague showed up and Pharaoh's heart was hardened and the enemy got harder on the people of God, the people got mad at the preacher and mad at God. And the whole time the enemy was getting harder on them, these signals that God was sending them, they were ignoring because they were so carnal that they, they were looking at what their enemy was saying more than what God was doing. And can I talk about this right now? We've got a lot of people that are more focused on what the devil says than on what the God of the person does. We've got too many people that are worried about words from hell over actions from God. And that's what they were doing. They were consumed with Pharaoh's reaction. And they weren't even bothered by the fact that locusts just showed up over the, all the entire land. Watch this. 
You can get in such a place of discouragement that even though God is doing things around you, the words of the enemy can be so strong and so loud that you ignore what God is doing over words being spoken by something in control of your life. Tell you, I, I've been in services where several people would get the Holy Ghost. I mean, outpourings, and I would leave in depression. And you would think, how? Last Sunday, sixteen people got the Holy Ghost Sunday morning. How can I leave discouraged when I go back to? The, I'll tell you why. Because even though God's pouring things out, the enemy can talk while God is doing. I feel, oh, it's amazing how God can be blessing here, and the enemy can be talking here, and you are going to follow which voice you're closer to. Whatever one has more impact in your life is the one you will listen to and the one you will believe as truth and if you're listening to the spirit of fear you've got faith in your enemy because that's what fear is it's faith in your adversary when you have fear you are believing what hell is saying over what god is saying but brother cole said it this morning we're supposed to have faith in god and so no matter what the devil is threatening to me i can look around at the signals around me and realize wait a second he's been good to my family he's been good to my kids he's been good to my Now you may think that's patty cake and cute, but a week ago when I was in McAllen, Texas, down by the border, and we were getting ready to eat dinner by the pool at the hotel, and my little kids jumped out of the pool, and their grandma and grandpa were down there, and the grandpa was talking to me. I took the little floaty off of Jet to give him his dinner to sit him down. I turned my back, and I looked behind me, and Jet is at the bottom of the pool with no floaty on, and I had to dive into the pool with my clothes on, my phone, everything in my pocket, and pull him out and save his life. You can tell me that God when I say God's been good it's general it's not general to me when I say God's been good I'm telling you I took it as a signal even though hell hates my kids and hates me that my God has a I believe I'm in more spiritual warfare now than I've ever been before. I believe I fight more devils now than I've ever fought them before. Even, I don't know why, but it seems like when you have kids, you fight devils. <laughs> Sometimes the devils are in the kids. Sometimes the kids are in the devils. But God keeps doing things. This morning... I'll be real with you. You think everything's so happy and blissful. We're in the little hotel room and we got the, uh, we got the, our little room. It's a little two room deal out in the living room. We have to pull out couch and the boys are sleeping on the couch. And I don't know why this why I just randomly wake up panicked. I go out in the living room I, and there's one boy on the couch and the other one's not in there. And I'm like, what in the world? I call him. All of a sudden he comes crawling out from underneath the couch with a butcher knife. Yeah, in the hotel little kitchen, there was a butcher knife, apparently. Now, I randomly woke up and randomly was worried about something and just happened to find him. Now, you may call that coincidence. I know that scared me. The devil scared the daylights out of me. But I took it as God still protecting my kid. Why would he wait? Why would he wake me up? I'll tell you why. Because it's a signal of my kid's season. Even though the devil doesn't want him to be anything, I will prophesy over him. Every night I speak to his destiny. I declare the life of God into his future because it's a signal. If the devil's fighting you, you must have a season coming. If the devil is warring against you, you must have a season coming. Somebody praise him right now for his protection, for his mercy, for his grace, for his anointing.
times in your seed that are in my hands. Trust me that I have it all in control and that your destiny is ahead of you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the circumstances surrounding you and what the enemy tells you. Because your times and your seasons are in my hands. <laughs> Put it in Ezekiel 20, 34, verse 26 for me. I will make them in the places round about my hill a blessing. I will cause a shower to come down in a season. There shall be showers of blessing. Lord spoke it to me. I was feeling in prayer. He said, what you consider a storm is actually a shower of blessing heading your way. And if you stare at the cloud long enough, you'll be convinced an attack is coming. But it's not an attack. It's a shower of favor that's coming. And you need to understand something right now. I release it in the Holy Ghost. This church is about to tap into a season of blessings financially and physically. Oh, some of you are patty caking it right now. I'm not, I'm not giving you some cute word. I'm, I'm telling you what I'm walking in right now in the Holy Ghost. What God's been doing in my own life, I can tell you, is a signal. The shower of blessing are coming. The showers of favor are coming. You have been sacrificing. You have been giving. You have been warring. You've been doing everything you can. And the Lord's using you. And the devil's fighting you. But that cloud that you see, do not run from it. It's not a storm cloud. It's a rain cloud. It's going to bless what you put in the ground. It's going to bless the sea that you have put in the ground. I curse the spirit of fear and every threat around you in the name of Jesus. That cloud is going to bring you favor. That cloud is going to bring things from beneath the surface. Your storm is about to become a shower. The shower of blessing is coming in his season. They told my Sataya, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. I've come to tell you right now in the Holy Ghost, I sense joy in here. I sense some peace coming to somebody. I sense some favor coming to somebody. You may not believe it. Fine, let your neighbor get your miracle. I don't care. All I know is I've been fighting the devil like crazy every day. But all I know is after the end of the fight, God keeps showing up blessing. God keeps taking care of needs. God keeps intervening. God keeps answering prayer. And I've come to tell you in the Holy Ghost, your season is coming. It's a signal. It's a signal. This message is a signal of your season. Somebody ignore your neighbor and grab your God right now and reach up to him. I said my season's coming. 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 I said your season's coming. To everything there is a time and a purpose. There's a season with your name on it. There's a season with favor written on your life where the blessing of God overtakes you. You're above and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. The Lord is on your side. I love, I love it. That's what you need to do right there. When that word comes to you, grab it. Just grab it in the spirit. Just grab it. That's mine. I receive it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What you're doing is you're taking the signal and you're putting it in your spirit. Anybody can hear it. But if you grab it and put it in your spirit, now it will manifest inside of you. Now until it manifests physically, you'll feel it internally. And what you're feeling internally will manifest pop. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hell been fighting you. Go ahead and get an answer right now. Go ahead and get a breakthrough right now. That's a rain cloud. That's not a storm cloud. That's a rain cloud. That's a rain cloud. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he hath no sorrow therewith. The Lord is going to show you he was with you the entire time. My season's coming. Your season's coming. 
I release it to every preacher in here. Your season is coming. Every preacher's wife, your season's coming. Every teacher, your season's coming. Every gifted individual, your season's coming. Every ignored, overlooked leader, every person who's got gifts inside of them that no one knows about, your season is coming. Keep praying. Keep being dedicated. Be being faithful. Your season. You haven't missed your moment. You're not being forsaken. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you. He will never drop you. You're not on your own. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. I can hear the wise men say in the back of my head, we have seen his star in the east. We've seen the signal. Where is the Savior? We've seen the signal. Where is the Savior? We've got a signal. We've got something guiding our steps. Oh, he orders our conversations. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Someone needs to hear God talking to you right now. He's in control of everything that you're going through. Everyone you talk to, everything you encounter, God is ordaining your steps. We got a lot of kids in the altar. I wish there were some moms and dads that would break out and join them right now. We got some families that the devil's telling them, your season of peace is over. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. I speak peace into your family. Your family's going to have a season of peace where there's not war and there's not quarrels and there's not strife, but there's peace and there's love and there's unity. Let there be unity. Let there be peace let the season of favor begin the whole building's an altar call the whole building's an altar call God has not forsaken you God has not dropped you you need to look up and get your signal because your season's coming. Look up and get your signal because your season's coming. Look up and get your signal. Your season's coming. Your season's coming. Hallelujah. That's it. Go ahead. Release it to the Lord. I come against that stress in Jesus' name. I come against that depression in Jesus' name. I come against that anxiety in Jesus' name. I come against that torment in Jesus' name. Your season's coming. Your season's coming. Your season's coming. Man, these young men are getting a breakthrough over here. Come on, kids, before youth camp, let's go. In Jesus' name. Your season's coming. Your season's coming. Your season's coming. Your season's coming. Your answer on the way your word from God is here get ready your name is being spoken in the heavens your name is being mentioned in the throne room your name is being talked about by the Lord your answers on the way Your answer's on the way. Your miracle's about to walk into your life. Your miracle is about to walk into your life. Because your season's coming. Your season's coming. Your season's coming. Your season's coming. I feel the Holy Ghost like a fire up here. Your season's coming. Your season's coming. Your season's coming. I don't care if you're 15 or 85. You're alive for a reason right now. Your season's coming. The 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Weeping endures for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. I said, Joy is coming in the morning. You've not had your last moment of joy. You've not had your last breakthrough. You've not had your last answer from God. You've not had your last encounter. You've not had your last moment. You've not had God smile, His last smile on you. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. The Lord is on your side. Some of you are wanting to believe me right now, but the devil's been so loud in your head. You're trying to ignore his voice and hear the voice of the word. Hear me in the spirit. Shut down that lying spirit. He's attacking you, holding you hostage. Let that go in Jesus' name. You've got something in the spirit. God is talking to you right now. You've got something coming. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Shake someone out of fear. Shake someone out of depression. Speak, Jesus. Speak, Jesus. Speak, Jesus. Speak, Jesus. Thy servant heareth. Thy servant heareth. Some of you need to engage right now. Engage in the encounter. Engage in the encounter. Let your walls down. Let your pride down. Let your worship up. Engage in the encounter. God wants to give this to you. God wants to elevate you. God wants to release you from that season that you're in and take you into a new season of favor, a blessing, of answered prayers. It's time to leave Egypt. It's time to leave Egypt. This bondage is ending. It's time to leave Egypt. This bondage is ending. I see it in the pews. <laughs> Why don't you find someone right now and lay hands on them and just start speaking over their season. Tell them their season's coming. Release life where death's been working. Release faith where fear's been working. Release strength where weakness is at. If you don't faint, you're going to reap. <laughs> the word faint means to get too exhausted. If you don't get too exhausted, you're going to reap in your own season. You're going to reap in your own season. Just don't quit. Just don't throw in the towel. Just don't, just don't get too exhausted. And God is going to give you strength.